Now let us discuss another common observation. We know that it's easier to move lighter objects as compared to heavier ones. So someone pushing a bicycle can cause it to speed up very soon. But doing the same for a motorcycle, he will not be able to speed it up with the same amount. Assuming that the person applies the same force in both the cases, we can say that for a given force, heavier the object, the lesser the acceleration. But if we see a small and a heavy object speed up equally, we can say that it must be because the person pushing the heavier object must be stronger than the other person. That is, if acceleration is constant, then force is directly proportional to the mass of the object. Now if these people were pushing the objects of the same size, then the stronger person will cause it to speed up faster than the other one. So we can say that if mass of the objects is constant, then the force is directly proportional to the acceleration of the object. Combining these two observations, we can say that force is proportional to mass into acceleration. In fact, Newton's second law states that the net force on a body is equal to the product of the body's mass into its acceleration. That is, F net is equal to mass into acceleration of the body. So from this equation, we can say that SI units of force will be equal to kg into meters per second square, which is also called Newton. So a force of 1 Newton is the force required to accelerate a block of mass 1 kg at 1 meters per second square. We can write this equation into the component form to have this equation along each axis. These equations tell us that a force along any axis is equal to the product of the mass of the body and its acceleration along that axis only. So the force along x axis does not have any effect on Ay and Az. You must always remember that an acceleration along any axis can only be caused by the net force along that axis only. Note that if the acceleration of the body is zero, then F net on the body should be zero. This is the Newton's first law. So you might be tempted to say that Newton's first law is a special case of Newton's second law. We do say that Newton's second law is consistent with Newton's first law. But as we have seen that Newton's first law defines inertia, so it cannot be considered to be just a special case of Newton's second law. Later in this chapter, we will also discuss another reason why we cannot say that Newton's first law is just a special case of Newton's second law. But for now, let us try a few problems.